Amen. Um, happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. For the past few weeks, the, the Lord has been opening up to us things that we, we need now and things that is designed to help us. And as Swinon has said in his last presentation, to, he, to encourage us to go over the things of the Sabbath, it's, it's very important that we start doing that. He's trying to instill, instill in us a habit for the crisis that's before us. And if we, if we develop the right habit, then we'll be ready for the, for the crisis that's just ahead. There's a serious crisis ahead of us, a real serious one, even before the Sunday law. It, it, the Sunday law is just a, the culmination of a crisis that already begun. And that's all. This, and the close of probation is the, is the last end of that crisis, the worst part of that crisis. And the seventh last plague, it can't get no worse than that. So the Sunday law begins as just a crisis on top of a crisis that's already here. And, and, we just, and the Lord wants us to be ready for it because we're about to feel it. And although there's a saying in Jamaica, all those who can't hear will feel. And everyone's going to feel it because no one wants to hear the voice. And Christ says, if any man hears my voice, well, since we don't want to hear, he says, well, maybe you'll feel my voice. So that's what the Sunday law is, so that people feel that voice and hopefully they'll want to hear that voice that brings healing to what they're feeling. So I pray that as we go through this today that we will see that and that we will go back to some of the, I'm encouraging us, please, go back to those videos from since we came back from New York. I'm encouraging us to really go back to those videos and, and take some of those things in. Um, from what I'm understanding, and I pray for God to give me the grace to say these things correctly so that people could get the right impressions, I believe he's really been pouring healing bombs in the things that we've been teaching since New York. Mm -hmm. I really believe he's been pouring healing bombs in it. I've, I've heard testimonies of, of people going through stuff, and then they watch the videos, and healing begun. And, and I'm like, Lord, there's healing bomb in what we're teaching right now, even more than before. There's healing bomb, and, I, and I'm really trying to encourage us to go get that healing blood that's flowing through, the, through those messages that since we came back from New York, I'm, I'm serious, even, even more than before. And I pray that today... Is, a, is, a, is, a, is another healing balm, and I don't want to take up too much time in that part. I just want to encourage that. So for the past few Sabbaths now, we've been going over the commandments, whether it be in the Sabbath or the commandment by itself. Why is the Lord teaching us about the commandment? Because he's really trying to heal us. The commandment is the last healing balm. He's really trying to get us to something because somebody's, somebody right now, the whole world is fighting his law, but no, Satan is, Satan is, like God is infusing in our mind to keep his commandment, Satan right now is pouring his evil blood into the minds of leaders right now to, to set up the way of breaking his commandment. Right now, he's doing that. As God is doing it to us, the same is being done where we can't see it. The world Adventists and the world can't really see us, so we can't see what's being done on the opposite end. So if it's being done for us, then we must understand that, that Satan is doing his part on the other end. At the same time, and both parties are going to meet for conflict, ready to fight. And, and I pray that we will be ready. The fight is really about to be intense. It's a, it's, and, I, and I'm praying for, for God to help me to, to really get us to see how intense this fight is really going to be. So, um, um, for the, so I'm beginning in the notes, if everyone has the notes. And um, have, um, I'm asking for readers. I'm not going to read every verse because we're familiar with these few verses, at least in the beginning, of Re Revelation 12, 17. Daniel 7, Daniel 7 21. 21, we might read that one because I don't think everyone's familiar with that one so much. But um, so in there, the whole context of that is the moral war. That's what we've been talking about. And I want us to see that climate change is a, is a, is a strong delusion of Satan that, that, that comes in harmony with Sunday, that prepares the way for Sunday and things of that nature, for, for Sunday worship. It's just, it's just Satan working the two sides to, to, get to, to basically get to, the, get to that one end. Yeah, and the end, he wants the whole world to break God's law morally in regards to the Sabbath. So things have to be prepared for people to come to a place where they don't love God's Sabbath and they love Sunday worship over the Sabbath. So the ground must be saturated for, for such an idea. He has to put that thought in people's mind. But the, the, the environment must be right for that thought to go in. If the environment is not right for the thought to go in, it'll be next to impossible to bring a Sunday law. So climate change is one of those environment that's going to make the climate change is one of those things that's going to make the environment right for a Sunday law and ready for one. And people are going to think, and we're going to see it as we go through this, hopefully. So in Revelation 12, 17, it says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make what? War. All right. And Daniel 7, 21. Can I have a reader for that? 21 and 25. Loud and clear, please. 
I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Okay, so this verse tells me how he makes war against the commandments. It's against the saints, and it's against times and laws. So when he wars against the commandments and the testimony, he's going to attack times and laws. So the next verse, Revelation 13, 7. So what we just read was Revelation 12. That was the dragon that was making war. Mm -hmm. Daniel 7 is showing us the beast is making war. And verse chapter 13 is going to show us the beast again. 13 shows us the beast and the false prophet, how they make war. This is all about a moral war. It's not about any, in the kingdom of grace, it's all about moral war. That's it. It's a moral war. And when we come to realize that this is a moral war, we will be more conscious of how we leave our houses every time we go out. And we will be more conscious of what we do in our house every time we're in our house because we're literally in a moral war. A moral war is a breaking down of moral morality in the soul. That's all it is. Adam and Eve were moral agents in the beginning. That's what they were. They were free moral agents, and Satan coerced them to sign an agreement with him to break down God's law. That's all Satan did, and he did it through a message, through a teaching. It's always a teaching that leads people to be immoral, and it's always a teaching that leads people to be moral. That's it. It will never change. It will always be that way till Jesus comes. It will always be a teaching that leads us to obey or a teaching that leads us to disobey. And there's many ways to teach, many ways for Christ and Satan to teach. And they both use the same methods of teaching. They both use the same thing, but they lead to different conclusions. They always lead to different conclusions. One leads to the final end, obedience. The other one, disobedience. But in the beginning of the other one, it seems like you're obeying. It's not until you get to the end you realize that you're disobeying. But Jesus lets you know from the beginning what you're doing before you get to the end, because our God is Alpha and Omega. He always tells us the end from the beginning. He never leaves us confused as to what's going to be in the end. Amen? Satan leaves the world confused as to what's going to be in He's telling them peace in the end. Christ is saying no destructions in the end. The only peace is in me. That's the only way, way, way peace is. So in Revelation 13, 7, can I read that one too, please, loud and clear? I don't want to take too much time on that part. 13.7, quickly, please. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast. You can beast start right there. Who is this beast that she just finished with? The United States. And it says that the United States exercised the same power as the first. Amen. That's making war. And so we need to understand how they make war. And I'm going to give us an easy one. Go to the next one. Let's read this one. Revelation 11, verse 7, right? This one is the easiest one. And what's the, the heading of this one? This is the highlight for today. This one. We're going to take this one. This, in this one, this is where climate change begins, right here. Revelation 11, 7, this is climate change, right here. Because, really, the French Revolution changed the climate. It really did. Is everyone following? The spirit of the South is always to change the climate. They change the climate for the spirit of the North. That's what they do. Is everyone following? The South changes the climate for the North, and when the North is in power, it changes the climate back to the South. That, that, that's how it works. Amen? That's how Satan, um, we need to understand how Satan works. His devices, when we see his devices, then we know what the climate is about to change to. We know what the next season is going to be for the United States and the rest of the world. And the next season that the world's about to go into is a religious crisis. Right now, we're switching. We're going to switch from civil and social crisis to religious crisis. That's, that's the season we're about to change to, that season. And if we don't recognize how it was in the past, we won't recognize the season now. And then we won't put on the right clothing for the season that's before us. So the Lord's trying to get us to put on the right clothing. And the right clothing for dealing with the relig religious crisis, make sure you have your feelings in check. Because this one is going to touch what you believe. Is everyone following? Amen. This one is going to touch everything you believe. And if your feelings is ruling you, you're going to fall. You're going to fall. That's why the Lord has been teaching us about Laodicea and our feelings. We need to get ready. Religious crisis touches everyone's feelings, what they believe in. That's what a religious crisis is. Social crisis only touch things without, really. It deals with social issues. Yeah. Things that affect me outside. Society. 
society, social crisis. Social crisis prepares the way for religious crisis, things that makes me do what I do in society. And if I don't like my religion touch and my feelings get hurt, I'm going to spew out the wrong words and cause people to stumble. Our doctrine is about to be touched. And if our feelings is not in check, we're going to rise up like Peter and curse God and die. Is everyone following? Peter did what Job's wife said to do, curse God and die. And Peter did die, but praise God, he died the right way. He did curse Christ. Did he not? He began to swear in a curse. He did exactly what Job's wife said to do. Mm -hmm. He cursed God and he died. He died, but he went and he killed self. He killed self. He died to self. He realized what Christ was telling him. Christ was trying to get him ready for a religious crisis that was going to touch his feelings. And because his feelings was not in check, he cursed God and he died. We don't need to have that happen to us. We are, if we believe what Christ says is about to happen, then let's get ready for it. Amen? Let's put on the armor he's asking us to put on now, that armor of faith. Let's get it on, and let's get ready. We're, it's about to get intense and very soon, and that's what I'm going to see. So Revelation 11:6, you just read it, right? You read it? 11:7. No. I'll read that, please. Revelation 11:7. Please, quickly, loud and clear. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. All right. Everyone should be familiar with this history. Everyone here in this movement and those watching who may not be familiar with it, we have plenty of videos or we can read the great controversy, the chapters called the French Revolution, a beautiful chapter, one of the most beautiful chapters in the book of great. The whole book is beautiful, but that chapter for this subject is a beautiful chapter. It's, it's simple, the French Revolution in, in great controversy. I encourage people, everyone, to read that book because history will be repeated. But before the French Revolution came, there was a Catholic Revolution. Catholic Revolution, then French Revolution. After French Revolution, a Catholic Revolution. And it's now about to change back to a Catholic Revolution. That's what 1989 was. It's changing from a French Revolution back to a Catholic Revolution. Is everyone following? And then when the Sunday law gets that revolution, it's going to go back to a cap. This is the battle between the North and the South constantly, constantly. And right now, America is changing from French back to Catholic. That's what we're going back to. America is being shaped for the Catholic revolution of leading the world to Sunday. And when that's played out, the world is shaped again for the close of probation back to a French revolution. It's, it's not, there's no new thing under the sun. It's just the same revolution back and forth. Back and forth. Paganism, Catholicism. Catholicism, apostate Protestantism, and then the second coming of Christ. That's all it is. Amen? So in this one, <clears throat> now I, I think the next part, it says thoughts, right? Um, seven, okay, what do we know about 1755? The Great Earthquake. What about the Great Earthquake? It touched the whole world. It touched the what? The whole world. Okay, this is now what I'm going to introduce. But before I go there, um, the builders, those who are builders in here, this mostly is, is towards y'all. And I really want everyone to understand this point. And I pray the Lord give me grace to bring this next point out. And I'm going to try to do it calmly and slowly. Brother Wesley, when building a house, okay, Swindon, when building a house, what do you need? Can I, can I get a writer, please? A good writer, a good writer. Materials. You need, okay, man. You went right to the one that I want the most. Amen. Material. You need materials, right? Yeah. You need, you need materials. Rashad, what, what else do you need? You need workers. Praise God. Amen. You can't, materials, no workers, you get nothing done. Amen. You need workers. Ramari, what do you need? I need tools. Need tools. Okay, praise God. Quentin, what do you need? Knowledge, actually. You need knowledge. Tools and knowledge. Amen. What do you need, Quentin? You need a plan. You need a plan. Amen. I mean, that's like the first thing, right? You need a plan. Okay. Um, so many things to hold it together. No, who, where's my other builder? Sineron, what do you need? A foundation. You need a foundation, right? Amen. You need a place to you need a good place to put it. Aaron, what do you need? Okay, okay we got tools. Give me something else. It might be a little challenging because the good ones are gone. How about you, Aiden? What do you need? Okay, yeah, well, I'll take your and Aaron. You're all both right. It's okay to take it again. And I don't have any more bills. Is, is there any more ideas outside of those? I'm sure they are. Money. You need, oh, say it again. Money. 
You need money. Absolutely. You need a lot of money to build. I mean, no money, no materials, all the plans, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything, right? So <clears throat> what I want to get from, those are all natural. Amen. Those are all the natural things. So if those are all the natural things that we need, those same things must apply to the Bible. Christ has been building a house since Adam fell. Because Adam destroyed the first house, Christ had to rebuild a second house, and he started in Eden. Is everyone following? He came with a plan. He came with materials. He came with workers, the angels. He came with workers. He came with tools. What else did he come with? And he came with money. All of that was in Eden, and Christ began with his first employee, which was Adam and Eve. Those are his first two employees to build and back the house he destroyed. Amen. The cross is the door to that house. Christ put the frame in. He says, I am the way. You can only come in this house through me. Amen. He put the what? The blood on the doorpost. Christ was the door to that house. The house is not finished. The cross doesn't finish the house. The cross makes the house, it makes an entrance to come in. That's why we're still here. Has anyone thought about that? That's why was, the house is still in building. The, the door, is just, the entrance to the house is just there. And what am I getting at? In order to build God's house, it's a spiritual house. Amen. To build this house, we need thoughts. The materials is thoughts. The tools is thoughts. The money is thoughts. The, the workers must have God's thoughts. They must be workers that have God's thoughts. The plans, God's thoughts. Is everyone following? All the materials to build this house is stones, which are thoughts. On the 1843 chart and the 1850 chart, these are the money, the material, the thoughts every worker should have in order to finish the ending part of the house. Each generation had a part they had to add to the house. We have the last part to add to that house. The door is there. Christ is the only way in. Now we need to go into that house to build up some of these things. Is everyone following? Yes, we need to dress this house with these things. We need to go inside. The, the workers did all the outside framing already. The, the generation before us, they did all of that already. Amen. We need to go inside. What, what is the hardest part? Swinon always said to me, the hardest part of building any is the finishing work. We got the hardest part of the work. But Jesus says, don't worry. I'll never give you more than you can bear. You can bear this part of the work. In fact, you got the best part of the work. Everybody wanted your part of the work. You got to fix everything. You got to fix it. Amen. Luther had some error. He thought that Sunday was the day to rest. We got to fix that. Got to fix that. Moses thought it was okay to kill to save. We got to fix that. We got to fix that. Abraham thought you could have more than one wife. We got to fix that. We got to explain to people God's law in relation to those thoughts in which they had. That's our part of the work. Is everyone following? We got to rescue souls that still have the thought that, that the Mormon church think they can have more than one wife because of Abraham's teaching. So we got to fix that. We got to fix that so that God's sheep that's in the Mormon church can come out and come here and come to this house. So all I want to bring in is the materials is thoughts. Why am I saying that, Lord? Why am I saying that? <clears throat> Where do we go to buy materials? What, what's the name of some of these stores? What's, what's the, actually the best stores that everyone likes? Home Depot. The Bible is Home Depot. The Spirit of Prophecy, that's Lowe's. Harbor Freight, that's the Pioneers. The mom and pop stores, that's the other stores like Home Depot and Lowe's. Is everyone following? The Soto, the mom and pops, that's Uriah Smith, A.T. Jones, and Haskell. We go to them to buy the thoughts to add material to the house. That's what we do. But we go to the main store, Home Depot, the Bible, to get the thought. But sometimes when I go at Swinon, we don't find what we're looking for. So he said, let's go to the Spirit of Prophecy. Let's go to Lowe's. And let's see if Lowe's have the thought that I need to add to this building. But then we go to Lowe's, we don't see it. And Brother Wesley says, you know, that thought in Ellen White is going to take a little while to explain. Why don't you go to Harbor Freight over there, Uriah Smith? He says it this way. And I take that thought from Uriah Smith. Oh, praise God. And I'm, now I'm able to see that what was needed for the house that Christ is building. And I put that thought in place. Is everyone following? Amen. I put it in place. But I want to say this. That's Adventism. 
there are also worldly wise men. Sometimes I'm walking and I see a worldly wise men store and I see something I need, but it's in the worldly wise men store. I didn't see it in Lowe's. I didn't see it. In, it's not that it's not in Lowe's and it's not in, in Home Depot. It's just that I didn't see it there. I couldn't find it. But I went to the Worldly Wise Men store and, man, I need that material. Let me give you an example. I that. need that thought. Go ahead. It's like walking into Hobby Lobby. Amen. Praise and God. And finding some for construction. Amen. That don't need to be. <laughs> Amen. Is everyone following? Yeah. I know I'm speaking to, to builders, but I want everyone to get this. This is a very important part of why I'm adding this. And I hope the viewers watching, I hope that y'all are following. If y'all not following, please contact us, and I'll try to find a different way of explaining this. There's a reason why I'm saying this. We have to watch how Jesus is building his house. He's the one that supplies the thoughts. He gives the thoughts, and we bring the thought to the house, and we see if that thought fit the building that he has going up. That's why he's telling us to start pay attention from Sabbath to Sabbath. He's now giving us the thought that we must not, 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 not recommend, not suggest. We must pay attention to the thought that's introduced on Sabbath and build your house and his house according to that thought. Because the house is thoughts are going to try the thoughts we put into the house. When they come to beat up on our house, they're going to, the worldly wise men, the Catholics, the Baptists, the Sunday churches, the nominal Adventist churches, they're going to beat up on our thoughtful house with their thoughts. And if we have the wrong thought, our house that we built by the thoughts of God's word that we thought was from God's words, we're going to fall. The winds, wind. the winds of thoughts is going to blow away our house. So we better make sure we're building on the right thought. What thought are you building on when you eat fruits and vegetables? Because the Bible says you should not eat fruits and vegetables together. That's not a good thought to harbor. Is that right? I'm, am I saying something right? Yes, I am. Are we to worship on Sunday? That's not a good thought to harbor. The Sabbath is going to come and beat that thought into the dust. And the seven last plays is going to make everyone who has that thought in their mind is going to humble them into the dust. You should have never had that thought. You should have humbled yourself in the dust before the close of probation by my thoughts. Amen? Amen? We, we need to be like, I, I, I really do like the analogy you're making. Because Home Depot is a general store. Yes. Right? You can go in the Bible, it says the, it says the Sabbath is the seven day. Praise you God. You can go in the That's Bible, nice. it says... But there are specialty stores. That's nice. You Amen. need certain things. I remember. I you had, need James White. Yep. Amen. I remember I had to build a um, a bathroom stall, and they wanted those kind of commercial. But I couldn't go to Home Depot. I had to go to this special store in a corner somewhere, where the where that is just tucked away, Amen. waiting for you. So it's the same thing. With I really like that Amen. analogy. And I, and I and I praise God. I'm glad he brought that back. Matthew has a material that I need. Yeah. Right. Sometimes Luke doesn't have the tool to make me understand this thought. So now I got it in order to put in a thought, I should say. So now I got to go to Genesis and get the tool for Moses so I can put this thought in. But when I walk through the Bible, I don't find the right tool. So I turn to the to Lowe's, the spirit of prophecy. Ah, praise God. There's the tool I'm looking for. Now I can take this thought and plug it into this thought. Amen. Now I found the right ham. I found the right screw, roofing screw, right? I found the right screw to put in this roof because I couldn't find it in Jeremiah. I couldn't find it in Daniel's store. I couldn't find it in Luke's store. But praise God, I found it in Uriah's store. I found it in A.T. Jones' store. So let me buy this thought from A.T. Jones. A.T. Jones, thank you for this thought. Now I can screw this part of the roof in correctly. But like I said... It's, amen. Praise God. Renovation is old material, old Amen. Food. So I need an old path. You need someone amen. who have that knowledge. Amen. Go back and say, you know what? This is the tool we used back then. Amen. You might need to resurrect it. Amen. amen. So now with that, now that we understand that, I'm about to, the Lord led me to, the Lord led me to a store this week with, with my daughter. We was, we was, we was working, laboring this week, watching a documentary on the Lisbon earthquake. Like we said, we knew 1755. And the worldly wise men in that documentary gave me a part, a material that Christ says, Kennard, I want you to put this material to the building. 
I want you to put this thought to the build in your building. I know it came from the worldly wise men, but he only stole my thought and corrupting it. So buy that thought and bring it back over here. Bring it, bring it back and build this house. Yeah, yeah, I got to clean it, got to polish it. Now, and I said, Lord, is this the thought you really want me to add to this? And the Lord says, yes, add this thought. And hopefully, by the grace of God, I hope we see the thought. It's a, it, I'm not just trying to show a beautiful thought. I'm trying to show us a thought that we need in order to build our house for the prices before us. Amen. This is not just some beautiful thought. We need this thought that's about to be shared. We need this. Is everyone following? Yeah. We need this. If we're going to build a house that Christ wants us to build because we're about to get beaten, our thought is going to be tried by the worldly wise men thought. And if we don't understand what these worldly wise men is thinking in relation to what God wants us to think, we won't know how to defend against their evil. And then we're going to be led to become immoral agents for Christ instead of moral agents for Christ. Everything in this world is just to lead people to break God's law, and everything in this world is given by God to keep his law. Satan is only taking God's material and building his evil house. And we need to take back those good thoughts and use them where they should be in God's good house. And build up the Lord's temple. It's thoughts that build temple. It's thoughts that build you and I. What thoughts are we using to build up our characters and our activities that we do every day? That's why we have the Bible and the spirit of prophecy and the pioneers. Now, going to the worldly wise men's store is not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Because you might end up going there and come away just like the worldly wise men, thinking you can sell things the way he sells it. That's only for those that Christ says, I want you to go there and get that. Amen. It's not for everybody. You need to know what's for you and what's not for you. You may have to tell me, Kanad, they, they said that over there. Can you check that out for me? Or Swinton, can you check that out for me? Because it's not for you. Swinton, Brother Wesley, knows who to send to the store to get a certain material. And they know who not to send. Because they might, they might come back with the wrong measurement or, or tool or whatever. So I'm not going to send, I'm not sending that person. He might go in there and get lost and take 10, 15, 30 minutes to get back. Because he doesn't know how to logically buy. So uh, Brother West and Swinton, you know what, I'm going to send Quentin on this one. Yeah, or you, yeah, that's the thing. You don't want to do that because it takes away from the job. Yeah, but that's yeah, right. sometimes, yeah. amen. It, yeah, it takes away from the job. It slows the work down if the one that's watching the work got to leave. It slows it down because as you go away, the work are messed up. So now you got to come back and fix that. Isn't that what Christ did? He went away, work is messed up. So he's got to come back at the end of the world spiritually again to fix everything. That's what he's about to do. And by the grace of God, hopefully he comes in us and uses us to fix it. And that's what he's trying to do. So now Lisbon Earthquake. Um, Rashad, can we play that video? Listen, can you send a video to everyone? Oh, you sent it? Okay, I want everyone, we're going to watch this video and hopefully everyone online. And as you watch this video, remember what we just discussed and see what thoughts you can take away. We all know about the Lisbon earthquake, but I'm about to introduce a thought that many of us, even I myself, never knew this thought existed. And by the grace of God, as we go through this, I want to see who's paying attention and who caught the thought. And who's able to take that thought and come down to the end of the world and see where this is going. Is everyone following? So I'm putting everyone there to, to use your brain now and come away with some materials because I need the material you have in order to help build this house so that we can do it together. Amen? So let us watch this video. It's a two minute and something video. It's a Two minutes and thirty. It's a beautiful documentary, and I want to encourage after the Sabbath and stuff, we can check it out for ourselves. Huh? No, no keynote. I couldn't do that one. All right, so everyone can click it. Let's try to click it at the same time. And, and, and try to listen to it at your own level so that way it doesn't interfere with everybody else. So go ahead and play it, and I'll stop talking for those two minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, it's easier on live stream probably. It started? Okay. Pombal orders the troops to clear the debris. Every able-bodied citizen is expected to help too. No one is allowed to leave the city. Unlike the priests, Pombal is sure the earthquake was not a sign of God's fury, but a natural phenomenon. And his response is just as rational. He sends questionnaires to every parish in the country to record the precise time, duration and severity of the earthquake, the effects of the tidal wave and the numbers of wounded and killed.
This scientifically priceless information is kept in Lisbon's city museum. The documents don't just show the scale of the crisis. They show how Pombal uses it to become dictator of Portugal. As he protects the population, he consolidates his power, cutting out his rivals. If they don't follow his orders, they will pay the consequences. Officially, the king still rules. In fact, Pombal is now the ruler of the king. Ordinary people in Lisbon are unaware of his takeover. They're just grateful someone has taken charge and given them a reason to hope. Like most of the merchants, Karl Peterson has lost everything. British merchants alone have lost 10 million pounds in the disaster. In today's money, that's more than a billion. But Peterson is alive and his family is safe. Three weeks later, news of the disaster reaches other European capitals. Stock markets crash. The disaster also shakes the world of ideas. There's a heated debate over the meaning of the earthquake. Is it a sign of God's fury or the work of nature? For the first time, science dominates the argument. There's a thousand thoughts in it. But I, yes, but I, I'm a, praise God. I want us to see that the president is going to lose power. He's going to lose power. He's going to still be president, but he's going to lose power. What is going to cause him to lose power? Brothers, there's a terrible natural disaster that's coming to this planet. A terrible natural disaster. Terrible. Terrible. Before the Sunday law. Before the Sunday law. There's a terrible natural disaster. The Sunday law brings a spiritual disaster. Is everyone following? All right, so the Lisbon earthquake, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, this is what the reason for the, the climate change. That's the birthplace of climate change right there. Yeah. For the first time, science wins mm -hmm. over the Bible. Mm -hmm. For the first time. Yeah. That was the birthplace of the French Revolution. That's where Voltaire, that's where they come from, from that. They come from that. That's where France got its ideas from. And what's the idea? It's um, the Catholic Church, when the Lisbon earthquake happened, there was a, a Jesuit priest that went out and says this was the wrath of God. So Satan used that Jesuit priest to go out there and tell people this was the wrath of God. Well, Paul, Paul Barr, yeah. he got angry. Paul Barr? Pombo. He got angry. And he says this is not no wrath of God. This is a natural phenomenon. So the idea now of natural causes mm -hmm. begin to take precedent over the commandments and the wrath of God. So now natural causes becomes the theme of modern day society, which led to the French evolution. Said science so-called. Science so French, the French, 1755 is the seed of what happened in France is the outworking of that thought that was introduced in 17th. I never knew this. I never knew that. In every major crisis, Satan sows a seed. In every, so COVID sold some seed. There's some seed that was sold in COVID. And we won't see its outwork until the Sunday law. Yeah, because they say trust the science. Trust the what? Yeah. COVID was a huge, major, every earthquake. I mean, common sense. Now we're going to go from builder to farming. When you farm, what must you do to put a seed? Agitate the ground. So anytime Christ wants to sow a seed, he causes an agitation. When he wants to sow a powerful seed, he's going to cause a sh Christ also causes a shaking. What is the, the seven what? It's seven seeds. Seven agitation, seven seeds, seven thoughts. A seed is a thought. Satan sold the thought of science over the Bible. So those men, you can finish the film, they reasoned that this is not now, this is the tectonic plate. That's what they say now. No, no, no. Ellen White says water and fire. That's what she says. I'm not going to say there's some truth to it, but Ellen White tells us plainly what causes earthquakes. She says the water mixes with the fire. And that happens when the earth cracks. 
Yeah, yeah. She says that leads to the crack, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not dis I'm not going into the scientific argument right now. All I want to display is that this is a thought that needs to go because we're all affected by this natural causes thought. All of us. We have it to some degree. We think that everything that happens to us is of natural cause. Yeah. The Bible does not teach that. There's nothing on this planet that happens by natural cause. Is everyone following? Amen. Everything has a cause. And the cause we're going to find out. What's the next heading after that video? Natural we're going to causes. Natural causes. Thank you. Well, what is it? Can you read? It's some quotes, right? Yeah. Read the quotes, please. Loud and clear. Loud and clear, these quotes. Loud and clear. Uh, this is important. This is an important thought. And if we don't get this natural cause thought right, we're going to fight against the light that's about to come when this natural calamity comes. We're going to fight it. Is everyone following? Yeah. We're going to listen to the scientists that say, no, this didn't happen because of such and such. This isn't the wrath of God. This isn't some divine judgment. This isn't because Moses prophesied this. This is just nature responding to nature. Na if you say it's natural causes, then you're forced to say that God is evil. You're forced to say that God put these things in nature to hurt men. No, these things in nature happen because men hurt nature. Yeah. So these things happen to tell man, stop hurting nature. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. If Adam didn't sin, these things wouldn't happen. The earth would naturally continue the way it was as though Adam never fell. Yeah, Go ahead. Quickly, please, quickly. I have to get the mic. So, um, yeah, the reason why I can definitely see that that was the seed of atheism, of the French Revolution and things like that, is because they're, they're taking, they're just eliminating God. Because it is true that these things are natural things, but they, they, it's like saying that the sun, well, okay, I'll leave that alone. Anyway, they, it's, it's the same thing as, Man no longer looking to God and looking to themselves like what happened in the Garden of Eden. They just look at creation and say that that's it. There's nothing behind it. And Amen. that's what they say with the natural cause. It's not that the natural thing isn't natural. It is, but behind it is the spiritual. Amen. But we're going to show some why this is. This is to remove the wrath of God and the law of God. This is the reason why Satan introduces thought. Mm -hmm. It's directly fighting the commandments of God and the wrath of God. Yeah, because it's fighting his law and his God. justice. Because he spake and it stood fast. Amen. We, we're going to see very clearly. Now, I hope we see it clearly. You could try on your time. Can I have a reader for the first quote? Probably the bold, if you can. I'm going to read it. The dwellers on the plain of China disbelieved God's covenant that he would not again bring a flood upon the earth. Many of them denied the existence of God and attributed the flood to the operation of natural causes. You can stop right there. What did they do? Why did they build a tower? Why are they building climate change? Natural causes. They deny the ex natural causes lead to the denying of the existence of God. Pombard denied the existence of God, which ended in the French Revolution. And made a dictator. And made a dictator. What did they get in the French Revolution? So what are we going to get in America? A dictator. And it's tied to natural causes. Natural causes and and failure of funds too, because. Yeah, amen. Because it said that once the earthquake hit, the stock market hit, the stock yeah, market dropped. Amen. Um, so this next worldwide. big thing is going to cause a huge crash. Yeah. A huge crash. And I, and I don't know if y'all heard the first part of the video. He commanded everybody not to leave the city. He told nobody's going out of the city. You're going to stay here and build this city back up. That's COVID. what Pombar did. That's what COVID is. Yeah. yeah. You're not leaving you're not the city. city. You're going to build this city back up. So what is the Lord showing us? When the cities get destroyed, what are they going to say? Go get the bricks and the mortar. You're going to build this city back up. Isn't that what 9-11 showed us? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so if you're in the city when this happened, guess what? You're not leaving. Pharaoh's not going to whip you to go get bricks and stones to build back that city. Is everyone following? Get out of the city. We got to get out. There's a huge natural calamity, a terrible one that such as the world has never seen that's coming. It's coming. And I don't know if it's in the form of an earthquake, what the, what the Lord is going to choose, a fire, a flood, a tornado, a tsunami, a hurricane, maybe the polar ice cap might melt. I don't know. But it's going to happen. That's what I know.
That's what Lisbon is teaching us. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Next one. Next quote, please, loud and clear. There is a constant effort to explain the work of creation as a result of natural causes. You can start right there. There's a constant what? Effort. So who's doing that? So who introduced that thought in Lisbon? That's the constant effort. He, yeah, and, it, and, and this it time it worked. it worked. For the first time, natural causes over the wrath of God and the, and the Bible has prevailed. It prevailed. In 1755, it finally prevailed. It took such a huge earthquake to bring that about. So in order to get people to go back to Sunday, it's going to take a huge earthquake to get the minds of people to go back to Sunday. I got a thought. Is everyone following? Yes. From revolution to revolution. Amen. Go ahead. I got a thought because that brings to mind some of what we went over last night. Because when you read this quote, it says to explain the work of creation. And creation, the Bible says he speak Amen. and it stood fast. Amen. And when you go to Revelation, it says I am Alpha and, and omega. omega. He's Alpha because he said it. And he's Omega because he's going to say it again. Praise God. So the re it. What, what really is the problem here is in the sense that Christ said Lisbon was going to happen. Half God said. That, that's what they did. They took Amen. exactly Amen. what God said Amen. and attributed it to Amen. natural causes. Amen. They, so, so, so what, they're saying what is, are some people going to do? Uh, it's a, it's a, I want us to see that that deny, disease. They're going to deny prophecy. I want us to see that that disease is amongst us. It's amongst us. Don't look out. It's right here. You remember your Laodicea. You don't. You don't see how you have this disease. You don't see how the things happening to you. You're ascribing it to natural sickness. No, it's not. It has a cause. There's something I have to address that in my own self, and say, Lord, I'm sick because I did evil. I did wrong. I don't know. I don't know where it is. Or you could be Job like, but Job was still a sinner too. But Job accepted the fact he understood that good and evil comes from the hand of the Lord. He knew that and he accepted it. But Job knew it was not natural causes. He knew that. So we need to what? Understand that. And that's why I like what Rashad brought up. It's not a coincidence. He went to climate change. In 1755, they said it was a natural phenomenon. When you go to the French Revolution, they said it was science. This is the new science. It's evolution. And after that, you come down to 2023, it's climate change. The same idea that took root, that found ground in 1755, is growing into a huge colossal tree in 2023. The same idea Satan sold then, he's sowing now. He's preparing men to reject the prophetic message we're about to give that says these buildings are going to fall, and they're going to fall based upon this, 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 and that. And they're going to say, no, tectonic plates moved. No, the cloud did this with the earth. No, the wind did this with the, with the rain. And this is why this happened. This has nothing to do with Genesis 9.24 or Luke 5.12 or, or Matthew 1 verse 20 something. This has nothing to do with that. So you know what Moses is going to do? Well, I'm going to bring two more plagues. I'm going to bring another one. And I'm going to show you how, that God did say. That's what Moses did. God did say. That's what he did. No, God said locusts. And locusts in such a way like you've never seen. And then the Lord says darkness in such a way like you've never seen. And he says flies in such a way like you've never seen. God did ten plagues in such a way like they've never seen. And Pharaoh still ended by saying, hath God said. God was trying to remove natural causes from the heart of Pharaoh. That's where he hardened his heart. Is everyone following? Natural causes harden Pharaoh's heart. That was his danger. That wasn't Belshazzar's struggle. Belshazzar believed in spiritual things. He just didn't what? He just didn't care. He, didn't, he was careless and indifferent to religious things. He believed in the religious things. But he, amen. Hand. I was just, um, you know, it just makes a lot more sense now because um, I always hear of the word natural cause for, for many reasons and somehow I just never believed it. 
As I, always, I always said to myself, something about it, I guess man, I guess man doesn't understand. Because even when a baby dies, just I think they call it sit. But I think they consider it natural cause. They have no, they have no reason, no information as to why the baby died. Makes so, no sense. So now it, it, it makes more sense now to me as because it, because because they deny God, they can't get that information. So God has has not given them. He he blocked off, you know, the information that that if they had, if they love God and, and they look into His work, and yeah. accept he accepted Him, they would they, they would know, and they wouldn't be put in natural causes. So whenever they, so it's like basically whenever man can figure it out. All it, all it comes to is natural causes. That's what it. does it do? Natural causes cuts off studying. Yeah. It makes you natural. I don't so need to ends, study. Right yeah, I don't need to look into that. It's just a natural. It happens every 100 years. But you need to know yeah. how natural things work. Yeah, amen. It's That's the difference. It's yeah. To make you know amen. How God put it in motion. Amen. The Bible says, and God said. Amen. And because He said it is why it's happening. Amen. So then your trust could only go in the one that said it. Thank you. Go ahead, Quentin. Okay, so I'm just thinking about it. The same thing, the same reason, uh, how do I say, the same thing in people's hearts that would cause them to say that's a natural cause, that earthquake, is the same thing that um, was in John's heart when he went to bow down to the angel that gave him the message. Because that the same, it's uh, attributing the message to the messenger. So yeah, they, to the natural man. Yeah, yeah. T- or to the natural cause. It's yeah. the same thing. They only yeah. look at the message in light of the messenger, and they don't that's trace it back. That's what the Jews back. did. Moses. Yeah. We're Moses' disciple. Right. That's and what that's they did. why we need the spirit. We need the oil, because who knows the spirit of God save the, the spirit, spirit of God. Amen. So if we don't have that spirit of God in us, we're only going to see the natural. Amen. Moses says, if God has ever spoken by me, let the ground open up and swallow these men. That's not a natural cause. But the people woke up the next day and said, Moses, you kill these people. They still had natural causes in their heart. And that's why I say brethren is amongst us. We need to start seeing that things happening is not natural causes. There's causes for why the things are happening. We need to go search out these causes. Is everyone following? That's what, next quote, please. This one is long. There's no bold one. Read it. I'll stop you at a certain point. And Isaiah said, This sign shall thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he hath spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees. And Isaiah said, and Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, okay. and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. It is, a, it is hard to understand how Hezekiah should think of it any more of a light thing for the shadow to go down than for it to go back. To us, it would seem to be just as easy to do the one as to do the other, for certainly no power but that of God could do either. And it is easy, it is just as easy for Almighty God to do one thing as it is to do another. Whatever Hezekiah may have thought about this, we can find excuse for him. But we can find literally no excuse for those more than would be wise divines who attempt to tell us how this thing was done. They attempt to explain by natural causes not only this miracle but other such recorded events, especially in the Old Testament. If these were the result of what we know as natural causes, if these things were in accordance with what is termed and known as natural law, then there was no miracle about them. And to talk, as some do, of these things as being two violent interferences with the order of nature is simply to talk nonsense. What is the order of nature? Who established the order of nature? Is not God above nature? Is not the order of nature simply the ordinance which God established? Assuredly so. Then he is bound as we are to act strictly. Then is he bound as we are to act strictly according to these laws? If so, then there is no such thing as a miracle. 
and every attempt to explain by natural cause any of the miracles recorded in the Bible is just so much an effort to reduce them to the level of the natural and to rob them of their sublime dignity as miracles. And it's therefore there. simply unbelief how much, how, however much faith may be professed. You can stop there. Is is there is, that's plain, right? Yeah. Very plain. That's why I like, I like that one to save it for last. It's too plain. Natural causes is an attack on God's law and his Bible. Revelation 6, 12 says the, the, the Lisbon earthquake was not a natural phenomenon. It was supernatural. God caused it to be because Jesus says they will be shaken in diverse places. He says, let there be. And God chose 1755 as the place to let there be. And go watch that video about what they say about Lisbon, why that earthquake was caused in the first place. The, the worldly wise men won't see what caused it, but they describe Lisbon accurately. I'm like, that's what caused the earthquake. Lisbon's lifestyle. It was disgusting. Mm -hmm. Very disgusting. They put money above people. Everything about Lisbon, money, 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 money. Money and more money. And they were, expo I think how much tons of gold, about millions of tons of gold from, from Brazil. They were just bringing shipload, bucket ships of gold to Lisbon. Just tons of gold to Lisbon. And oppressing the poor people at the same time. Just goes, Lisbon was a terrible place. It was a money hungry place. And it just led to, but anyway, back to natural causes. So in the next part of the note, it says reasons for, for natural calamities, right? For not, for calamities in general, real right? Real, real reason for climate change. So at the end of the world, natural causes now change to climate change. And the climate change people will tell you that it's emissions and that is burning fossil fuels and, and that is, is carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and that is plantations and, and think, is that true? Yes, it is. It is true. That's, not, that's part of the truth. The real reason for climate change does more than carbon. The real reason for climate change is transgression of God's law. Genesis chapter 3, 2 and 3 teaches us, here is the real reason for climate change. And this is what we're going to look at. We're familiar, we've been quoted, I don't, the, Christ has been highlighted in the book of Genesis for the longest while. And I praise him for that. I love that he's doing that. Yeah, he's the alpha. He, he's getting ready to give us an omega understanding to Genesis. That's why he's doing that. He's about to give an omega thought to Genesis. So he's making sure that we're, we are aware of the alpha thought that he gave for the first building he laid in Genesis. And he's about to give an omega thought that's going to swallow up every false thought on this planet. Every one of them. But we need to make sure that we have the right alpha spirit within us. And the alpha spirit we need to have is God says, let there be, and there was. And God said, and God commanded the man. God placed man under obedience to law. And when Adam and Eve disobeyed that law, the climate change. Amen. Is everyone following? Amen. So what leads to climate change? Sin. Disobedience. But I don't want us to miss the alpha of this. I really, the Lord says, highlight this, and I'm going to. I don't want us to miss the alpha of this. The first climate change was Adam and Eve's sin. The second climate change was Cain's murder. The third climate change was the flood. Those are the three major climate change from, and from the alpha. So these three, we better make sure we understand. It's a, yes, it is. We're going to read the quotas in there. These are the three times God cursed the earth by a climate change. But the first one I want us to see is this. What's the first one? What was it over? Eden. Ah, oh, so what brings a climate change? Eden, what God forbids. Every time we eat what God forbid, the climate literally changes. Is everyone following? This is serious. Every time people eat pork, that's why the climate's changing. God forbid it. Common sense. Let us go and try to eat pork and see if the climate don't change in us. Won't it change? If we, if we mix fruits and vegetables, God forbid the mixing of fruits and vegetables so the climate in your body changes. The Lord is trying to teach us the real reason for climate change is eating the wrong food. 
On October 22nd, 1844, Jesus commanded the earth to go back to Eden, the diet he gave to Adam to slow down the climate's changing. Is everyone following? Amen. If every single Adventist was eating the diet God said for them to eat today, the climate in the Seventh-day Adventist church would change to something better. But every time Seventh-day Adventists like Adam, who was a Seventh-day Adventist, decide to eat what God says they shouldn't eat, they change the climate in the house, Eden, which affects society, the world. And if we keep eating what God forbids and keep changing the, the climate in his church, he's going to put you outside of Eden. He's going to put you out as dung, as waste in the body. Is everyone following? That's the, I, I don't really want us to miss this. Amen. I really don't want us to miss this. The reason why I'm stressing this, brethren, we need to reform and diet. This is serious. Every time we eat what God forbids, we're literally changing the climate of the earth. That's why the Bible says God is going to destroy those who destroy the earth by eating what he forbids. We destroy the earth literally when we eat what he's forbidden. This hasn't changed. We're repeating the same sin of Adam. That's why Christ is saying reform and diet so that when the seven last plagues falls upon those who've been eating what he's forbidden, it won't fall on you because your climate changed to the right order. Is everyone following? Right. Second climate change. Murder. Hatred. Anger. Yeah, hatred when we're angry with somebody, whether in our heart or openly, we're changing the climate. Yeah, the mother is responsible for the atmosphere. Yes. Brethren, this is serious. We're literally changing the climate by being angry with people. How many people would have saw something like that? How many people would have thought that by simply being angry, you make the, you make the rain fall somewhere where it shouldn't have fell? How many people thought that? How many people thought that your anger is causing an earthquake somewhere? Because the earthquake is an expression of your anger. How many people would have thought that? How many people would have thought that? This is serious. It's real. It's not natural causes. Every small earthquake, every small fire, every F1 tornado, every thunderstorm is only an expression of the transgression of God's law. It's not natural causes. There is a cause for that hurricane. There is a cause for that flood. There is a cause for that house that just burnt down yesterday. Largely who? Seventh-day Adventists because it's Adam. The people who knows what? Better. Brethren, I, I pray y'all believe this because if y'all don't believe this, y'all not going to change our practice. If we don't believe what the Lord is showing us, we're not going to reform our life. The Lord is letting us in on what, how heaven views this world. That's what he's doing. He's opening up heaven to us. We transgress his law and we cause the curse to come upon the earth when we're angry with somebody and don't put away that spirit. October 22nd came to make people peaceful and not be angry. There would have been less earthquakes and floods and famines. Uh, but I don't want us to miss this. The first murder caused a famine. Yeah. Famine happens because of murder. The shedding of blood. Yeah, what Cain couldn't produce, the ground couldn't yield fruit. So wait a minute, so you mean the cause of every famine is because people's killing people? Yeah. Yes, that's what the Bible says. When you kill someone, you take their life so God take away your life in food. He's just doing to you what you did to that person. Is everyone following? Yeah. So the next time we see a famine, it's because the earth is being filled with violence. Go to the next change, the flood. What, what, what happened there? What, what was it? Ah, oh, evil thoughts. Changes the climate. And what? That's the one I was looking for. Adultery changes the climate. Yeah, it, brethren, I really want us to see this. Every time we have a wrong thought, that's why it's probably flooding somewhere. The flood is an expression of the evil thoughts of men. Is everyone following? 
So the Lord can punish at any time. He can cause his wrath to fall at any time. October 22nd came to turn away God's wrath. That's why it came, to turn it away. But I'll, I'll, I'll read the last quote, Romario. Uh, uh, can you read it? The last quote, the three changes? Okay, Swinney, can you read it, please, the last quote? The last quote in it. it does, is everyone following the thought? The very last quote on the page, right? Okay. Yeah. Just a bowl, please, yes. just a bowl. The first curse was pronounced upon the prosperity of Adam and upon the earth because of disobedience. The second curse came upon the ground after Cain slew his brother Abel. The third most dreadful curse from God came upon the earth at the flood. All right. So what did she say? I want us to see who's paying attention. The first one, appetite. The second one, presumption. The third one, love of the world. Praise God for our Savior. He changed the climate back. Yeah. He overcome an appetite. So the climate that he's going to get a second earth. Amen. Because he's going to need a planet to fit the climate that he fixed. Amen. He overcome presumption. He didn't kill because he was oppressed. Cain was presumptuous. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. And the third one, the sons of God. They went into the world because they saw the daughters of men. They saw the world, how it was beautiful, and they fell to Satan's temptation. And they brought a flood upon the earth because of that. The Lord has shown us when we break his law naturally, we're naturally changing the climate. And Jesus overcame in the three strongest points so he can get a second earth with a healthy climate. And the only ones who get to enter that earth are those that overcome one, two, and three. Is everyone following? No. I hope we leave here and examine what we're eating and how we eat it. Because we're affecting the climate in, the, in your house, in the church, and the world. And I hope we're not angry with anyone in the house, in the church, or in the world. And I hope we're not lusting after anything in the house, in the church, or in the world. In each case, we're changing the climate. Climate change has a cause. The cause of climate change is transgression of the law. When we see a disaster happen, men is supposed to examine themselves and see where in the law they're in transgression. Man, the world has a huge reform to make. You can see why the Sunday Law is coming to help the world to make that reform. The Lord is bringing these judgments to help the world to reform to prevent the seven last plagues. Is everyone following? The worst climate change this world will see is the seven last plagues. And the Sunday law, when they make a national Sunday law, the climate's really going to change. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to change. When they make a civil Sunday law, the climate's going to change. And brethren, the fifth day to fourth month, the climate literally changed. It changed. COVID came to express that change. That's what COVID did. It expressed people of planet Earth, your climate has changed. Yes. So, Brett, I'm serious. I hope that we take this to heart and look at our lives and see where we need to reform. Because how we're living wrong is hurting somebody in your house, in the church, or in the world. Amen. Our wrong living is hurting people every day. Right living heals people every day. Amen? Amen. Let us encourage one another to live right today so that we can help those around us in the home, in the church, and in the world. That's what those three tests shows. One was in the home, Cain and Abel was in the church, and the last one is in the world. I just love the Bible. You can prove every, every doctrine is proved by every text. Every single thing we believe, you can take those stories and prove it. And what's the conclusion they should lead to? Obedience to the law of God. If Adam obeyed, the climate wouldn't have changed. 
And the, when Adam sinned, y'all can read the quotas in there, a leaf fell from the tree. It got cold. It got what? It got cold. Virgin, I want us to see something. Whenever we eat what God says we should not eat, you lose a brain cell. That's a leaf. Because you are the tree. And a cell is lost every time you eat. Every time we eat what he says don't eat, a brain cell is lost. A leaf falls from the tree. You don't notice what that fallen leaf is yet until you develop a brain aneurysm or a cancer or dementia or tuberculosis or bronchitis or diabetes. Now that, that leaf, so many cells have fallen that you just develop a sickness. A natural sickness? No, a cause sickness. And it all started with the way you were eating. Is everyone following? The Bible is very beautiful. It's very practical and very living and very real. And God wants us to bring that real word into our hearts so that we would be real Christians. And that we would really live the way he says to live. And I pray that we examine how we're eating today and examine our feelings towards one another today and examine if we love anything in the world today. That's what those three things are recorded for, to, give, to, make, to make sure that we check to see where we're feeling. Am I feeling an appetite? Now, I could have switched them and went spiritually, but I didn't want to do that as yet. I really wanted to do that one, but, but Christ teaches first comes that which is what? You, you should see, begin to see the spiritual one all on your own. You should begin to see it all on your own. Because now that the, the diet is now what teaching are you imbibing. Amen. And, and when you go to Cain and Abel, what truth do you hate? Is everyone following? And what false teaching do you love that encourages worldliness? We can go spiritual too. But if we, we'll understand the spiritual better when we understand the natural better. Amen? So I, I really wanted to get to the Sabbath part, but I'm not going to do that. That would take, that would take some time. And I, because what, I'm going to just end up on this thought, and it's this alone. The lifestyle that God is asking Seventh-day Adventists to live is a future lifestyle. It's for the future. Literally, it's for the future. The world won't see the wisdom in why we live the way we do until they see the need for why we live the way we live. And that's what the foolish virgin saw. And they come to you and they now say, Romario, in the Sunday law, teach me how not to mix fruits and vegetables. Brethren, the time when you should, have been, you should not have been mixing fruits and vegetables is gone. Because not mixing fruits and vegetables now is developing in you a spiritual character you need for the future. And strength. strength. It's not about just the natural body. Eating the way God says to eat is building something spiritually in you. And when the test comes, then you now see why you need to eat that way. So the foolish virgins, they now run to go not mix fruits and vegetables in the Sunday law crisis to get the character they need for the Sunday law crisis from eating, from not mixing fruits and vegetables. But it's too late. It's too late. That time for you to obey in that aspect of obedience is past. And everyone who obeyed in dressing the way the Lord said, every woman that wears skirts and dress, the skirt and dress, ladies, is only an expression of something spiritual for the Sunday law. Every time you do it, you're developing in you a spiritual nature preparing you to stand at the Sunday law. So every time you don't do it, you're preparing to fall at the Sunday law because you're already falling and not wearing dress, skirts and dress. So you're already showing me and the world you're going to fall when the test comes because you don't have the spiritual added strength you need by, by dressing the way God said for you to dress. The Lord is not simply asking us to do things to better us naturally. The things he's asking us to do is doing something in us spiritually at the same time. That's what Swindon read this morning. Everything the Lord asks us to do naturally is preparing something spiritually in us for the Sunday law. Every Sabbath, we're literally living the life for the Sunday law. Every Sabbath. You can't buy sell. You can't, what do you can't do with the Sunday? I said I wasn't going to go into it, but I'll end up. You can't buy and you can't sell. What else do we do on the Sabbath? So what can't you do with the Sunday law? You can't speak your own words. 
What else must you do on the Sabbath? You must, what did you got to do with the Sunday law? Obey the law. On the Sabbath, we're to have a special Sabbath suit. You know what Ellen White says, the special light given to John, which was expressed in the seven thunders, there's a special Sabbath suit. So if we don't dress right on the Sabbath, we won't get that light at the Sunday law. Is everyone following? It's vital that we examine. The Lord is opening up light on his law. And I pray that this week we will go home and look into his law, Amen. to his commandments. To start with Genesis 2.16, and the Lord God commanded the man, go see what God commands you and me, and let's live by it. Amen? Amen. And encourage one another to live by it. In Genesis chapter 3, we saw the one who discouraged somebody to obey God's commandment. So when we go through this week, I hope we're not a serpent to each other and discouraging one another from not living, keeping God's commandment. We discourage each other, not simply by our words, by mixing fruits and vegetables, you're discouraging your neighbor. By a woman not dressing the way she should dress, you're discouraging your neighbor. By not studying what God is telling you to study, you're discouraging your neighbor. By going where God has forbidden you to go, you're discouraging your neighbor. Is everyone following? Amen. And remember this, every wrong we do is literally changing the climate. There's no such thing as natural causes. There's a cause for the natural things that take place. There is a cause. Men said they say that's to excuse themselves from repentance, to excuse themselves from turning and going the wrong way. That's why they ascribe it to natural causes. It does away with God's law. That's what it does. That's why I teach in, in the medical profession uh, that being sick is something normal. Yes. That's why they teach that. Because so it's, no it's change. Cause. There's no cause. So no but changing. No, right. No changing. That's the real reason for the teaching of climate change. Climate change is preparing the way for Sunday law. That's what it's doing. It is. People out there who teach that, it is true. It is doing that. Yeah, but how? They, they see, can't prove it. They only seen the natural. Yeah, they can't prove it. They can't prove it. They, they can't go into the Bible. Amen. Rather than just the world being prepared by, by, as a people. Amen. Don't see that their own hearts are being prepared for it. Amen. Praise God. So we'll close there. And I just want to, Revelation 6, 12, Christ wants us to understand it. The Lisbon earthquake, there's something in there he wants us to get. There's something in there. And I pray that this week we'll take, you don't have to read the whole thing. Just read what she says in GC, the Great Religious Awake. I think it's that chapter. The Great Religious Awakening on the Lisbon Earthquake. Now see what Uriah Smith says. See what James White has. Get the thoughts for it and let's bring it to the building. Because out of that thought, the Lord is going to give you a new thought. Because once we settle into this thought, Amen. he's going to add another stone. Amen. Amen. So let's get ready. He's about to add another stone to natural causes. This, he's going to bring another stone. And I praise God for that stone because is, that stone is going to be in connection and showing how he's God above all things. Amen? Amen. So let us close out with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for being the God of nature and for being the God of, of this world. But we want you to be the God of us. And I pray and ask, Lord, that you please forgive us of our sins, that you'll create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. I pray that your words were searching today, that it, 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 it caused us to reflect upon our lives, to see wherein we are in transgression to your law, with the part we play, in a, just like Adam, the part Adam and Eve play in affecting the world. Adam affected men everywhere naturally, and Eve affected women everywhere naturally. So Lord, you're teaching us everything we do affects somebody else, even though they're not a part of us, they're being affected by the things we do. So I pray that like Jesus, we can go about doing good so that the good we do would have a right effect upon people and not the wrong effect. Help us to be the second Adam in our, in our ways and, our, and in our lifestyle and to leave off the sins of the first Adam. Please help us to do these things, Lord. We cannot do these things of ourselves. So we really ask for your help. We ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. We ask for the help of holy angels whom you've commissioned to, to assist us in this work, oh Lord. We're not alone. We have heaven's, heaven on our sides. So please be with us. Help us to meditate upon the things we heard from the health message down to this point as we pass through this Sabbath so that we would not break this Sabbath. For in breaking the Sabbath, O oh Lord, we're affecting one another and we're affecting the whole world. We may not understand how we're doing it, O oh Lord, but the scripture says we're doing it. So please help us to set a right influence into the world by our actions this Sabbath day. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.